My name is Nick Scott. I'm part of TeamBodybuilding.com. I'm an IFBB Pro wheelchair bodybuilder as well as a professional wheelchair ballroom dancer. I'm a professional speaker and I'm the CEO and president of Wheelchair Bodybuilding Inc. Basically, I'm the global promoter of the sport of wheelchair bodybuilding. Back in August of 98, I was 16 at the time. I was going to football practice and my left front tire blew out. It rolled my vehicle five and a half times. It broke my back and damaged my spine at T12L1. And the doctors diagnosed me as paraplegic and they told me I would never walk again, that my football days were over. And I was devastated. And from there I got severely depressed and my weight went up to 300 pounds. And I basically wished that the accident would have took my life. Because just like when the doctor said it would be physically impossible. And it's about, it's, success is not about a destination. Success is a journey. And it's about going the distance because it took me over six and a half years to finally get a little sensation that I walked across my college graduation to get my diploma. So eventually when I got to the weight room, I realized, you know, I couldn't do squats, power cleans, deadlifts, but the one thing I could be and do was bench press and be strong and I stuck with what I could do and just really focused on the mindset like a sniper, totally focused when I could. And then eventually things led from that to being, you know, being a two-time world powerlifting champion. I never competed against other people in wheelchairs and my career was 39 first place, two seconds and one third. You know, what I do is I basically go around and I promote not just wheelchair bodybuilding and not just wheelchair ballroom dancing, but to show others that they can pretty much do anything and if they set to do something, they can achieve it. But you know, between the guest pose and all over the country and like even around the world, as well as the ballroom dancing, you know, it's like I constantly make appearances as well as my speaking to get out there, to tell my story, to inspire, to motivate, to impact lives. And I really truly love what I do. And it doesn't matter if I work, you know, seven days a week. I do what I do to get the job done. And that's what I do. I keep motivated because it goes back to I don't do this for myself. I don't look at bodybuilding as my job. It's more like a hobby thing, but I take it, I'm obsessed about it because I do want to get the wheelchair division on the Olympia stage and I want to lead the sport by example. A lot of the guys and everything look at me as inspiration or the guidance and I want to lead and show them that anything's possible and having pro shows and stuff like that give them hope and it gives them something to strive for. That's what motivates me, to be able to inspire others to be the best that they can be. Yeah, in the beginning when, when I just started out training after my accident, I, I had a chest brace on and I was very limited to just transfer to benches because I didn't have a lot of mobility. I mean, there's a lot of things I realized I couldn't do because that was my mindset at the time. And then I started with the bench press and from that it built my confidence and that I really wanted more. So instead of thinking I couldn't do this or couldn't do that, I, I had a, a bigger mindset and a more open mindset about things. And instead of thinking I couldn't do it, I just I started thinking, how could I do this? Or how can I make adjustments to make it work for me? You know, maybe there wasn't a spotter. So I did a lot of my, my training in the, in, the, in the Smith machine, just in, as well as the incline. Instead of having to transfer to a, the incline bench, I, I just adjusted the bench in the Smith machine to raise it up. You know, it's little things like that as well as curls. I didn't have to be in an incline um, bench to do, you know, dumbbell curls. I could just simply like lean back and I could be in the same, the, like the movement. So I really started to think outside the box that it's really about the, the angles of the body and the movement and really just understanding how to actually do those movements in a different mindset. And that's really what gave me, you know, understanding of how I actually needed to adjust my, my training. Typically I train about five to six days a week and it's normally about six days and like in the beginning of the week I train the bigger muscle groups and then I do the smaller muscle groups and I'll, I'll break it down for you. So on Monday I do back and then on Tuesday I'll do uh, chest then normally Wednesday I'll do some quad because I got quad movement and then abs that way it gives my upper body resting period. 
And on Thursday, I work my shoulders and traps. On Friday, I'll do arms, biceps, triceps, as well as forearms. And then on Saturday, I'll either take off or on Sunday, I'll train. Um, it's either or I'll train. It just really it depends on how I feel. But then I'll train my hamstrings and my inner and outer th uh, thighs. They're both weak. So it's more like a rehab to me, as well as I'll do abs again. So I'll hit abs twice. Yeah, my workouts are bodybuilding specific. And, you know, even Arnold in his book, you know, I read a lot of material and I said it over the years. And even if you follow like Jay Cole or Ronnie or any of those guys, they all do the same thing. And I basically just follow those and I just mimic the guys that are successful and it works. And it's just basically I train the bigger muscle groups more. So take like back, I hit about 16 working sets, chest between 14 to 16, shoulders between 12 to 14, traps about four to five sets, triceps normally between nine to 12, biceps nine to 12, and you know, the quads about 16. And it's really, I aim between eight to 10 reps, sometimes 12 on certain exercise, I go by fill. And I'm really in the mindset, I just I love to lift heavy because I got the powerlifting background. I don't change up my program that often. It's basically the same thing, but I do change up some of the exercises, you know. And if you look at like Ronnie or Jay, they all do like bench press or some of the same movements like squat. So it's really not about muscle confusion. Everybody's stuck on this muscle confusion. But take a bench presser, for example, you know, in order to bench press a thousand pounds, they keep doing the same exercise and same movement because they want to strengthen that movement and no bench presser will ever skip a bench press workout that's just how it is so i believe in strengthening the strong movements and adjusting the small movements like the last two or three exercises with cardio in the beginning i used to just push myself in wheelchair as then i sort of like i hated doing that but i still do it to this day so then i sit behind a recumbent bike and I would pedal with my hands and I monitor my heart rate to make sure I don't go over what I needed to do. But then I try to do swimming and some people like that, but I absolutely hate it. And then it's like really figuring out what works for me, but eventually I got to the point where I can use the recumbent bike with my feet, and, but then my feet fall off the pedals. So then I took it where I took Velcro strap and strapped my feet and that gave me problems. And I actually lined before, lined the entire foot of my, of my shoe with Velcro and on the pedals, line that with the opposite Velcro and stick them on there. That worked for a while, but then that started becoming a pain because it's, you know, trying to place it. Whereas sometimes I'd even, I'd bolt my shoes into the pedals, but then, you know, trying to put my shoes on, that was a pain. So it's a really trying to figure out what works for me. Basically my diet consists of six meals about five meals and also one uh, supplement protein and basically I'll eat about six ounces of uh, some sort of protein and as well as anywhere between five to six ounces of, of carbohydrates so I'll break it down say like um, the breakfast I'll eat like six ounces of lean steak two whole eggs and half a cup of oatmeal because of oatmeal and yams and certain type of potatoes is more of like a low glycemic carbohydrate slow digesting but then like meal two I'll have six ounces of chicken with one cup of rice with one cup of broccoli. And then meal three, it'll be like a lean, like a higher 90% lean beef, as well as a six ounce potato. For meal four, I'll have six ounces of chicken with five ounces of yams. And for meal five, I'll have eight egg whites with a fourth cup of almonds with one cup of broccoli. Now for the last meal, which is actually like meal after my workout, which is my protein shake, I take two scoops of protein powder as well as like a, a carb powder after my workout. So that'd be like my six meals. Yeah, you know, it's like for the most part, I, I do eat lean, but when I have a cheat meal, I hear about these clean cheat meals. I don't do that. If I'm gonna have a cheat meal, I'm gonna have a cheat meal. But I don't do it all the time. But I like, I'll be strict for like three, four months and I'll just have a, like a really bad like cheat meal, like one to two, and then I'll stop. It goes back to why you're doing it for the first place. To actually have a purpose and have a reason why you do what you do. If you actually have that, you won't have the urge to cheat on your meal. My approach and philosophy is supplementation is everything because it actually aids the muscle and the muscle tissues to heal quicker. And that's actually the whole reason why you do the recovery process and that's what actually makes the muscle bigger and stronger and faster. 
in order to be the best, you gotta take a wide range to enhance the body. Protein powder, I take a, a slow digestion protein powder like a casein. I'll take a multivitamin. I'll take a pre-workout, uh, CLA, BCAs, glutamine, creatine, and basically like a ZMA for like sleeping. And I take a wide variety of supplements. For a beginner, what I'd recommend, I would recommend a protein powder, a multivitamin, and some sort of pre-workout. So that way you have a more intense workout. That way you feel better, better about yourself and you're motivated. And a little tip about taking a multivitamin, you always want to take it with food because it absorbs more efficient in your system than just taking it by itself. Basically for those who are afraid of taking supplements or actually trying it, you gotta actually realize what it actually does and actually educate yourself. I would not get the type of results if I did all my training without, because I know and I'm educated and I got multiple certifications and I know that supplementation is a critical part of the muscle development All right, that's it for about me, as well as my training, nutrition, and supplementation. For more information, you guys got questions for me, contact me on Body Space, The Beast, WCBB. Bodybuilding.com is committed to changing lives. For more articles, videos, or content, keep coming back to Bodybuilding.com.